if you want to talk empties, a whole year's worth of empties, then stick around. Hi there, it's Elaine, and yes, we are talking empties. And I have close to 140 items, 138 to be exact, of empties that I have from 2019. Now this is not including samples, so I will have a separate video, um, a new edition of my Slaying My Samples stash coming up. These are just full size products, obviously not all brand new at the beginning of the year, that I have managed to put in my empties for 2019. I cannot believe that I have 138 items to show you. Now I realize that nearly 140 items is a lot, so I'm going to leave timestamps for the different categories that I'm going to have in the description box so that you can skip to whichever categories you're most interested in. So let me give you a little rundown of the categories. So when it comes to nail hair products, that is one category. Another category is makeup. I also have a body wash and scrubs uh, category. Uh, also skincare is another category aside from body butters and scrubs. And I think, yeah, I think that that is the whole of it. So let's get into the first category. I think I'm going to start off with body washes and then body butters and hand creams. So here I have four of them. Two of them are the same and they are the Olay Ultra Moisture Body Washes. I really do enjoy these. It's the Shea Butter version and it smells really good. It's a very mild, pleasant scent and um, I obviously liked it enough to get a second one. So this is, these are the two that I used up. I also used up one that I would not recommend and it was in the teen box of goodies that I have reviewed on this channel. I'll put that video right here. And it's the Dove Dry Oil Moisture Body Wash. And it smells very much, come on, and it smells very much like a, I'm going to say a men's body wash. Yeah, and I gave it to my husband to use in the shower and I ended up helping him finish it because he wasn't too, too interested in it either. So obviously not a product I would repurchase. And then finally, one that I quite enjoyed was this Ombre Spa Aromatic Body Wash. And it looks like this. And I was, I managed to get every little bit out of it. And it's, um, it's definitely citrusy. Um, I, I just, I thought it was fine. It came as part of a spa kit and I did enjoy using it. Nothing much to say about it. Would I repurchase? Probably not. Um, I think out of the three that I showed you, this is my favorite by far. Now these are two body scrubs that I ended up getting as gifts, either gift with purchase or from a friend. So I have these two. One of them is the Napa Valley uh, from Brompton and Langley. Uh, Napa Valley body scrub and I thought nothing of it really. I just used it because I had it. Um, I would not care for this product again, wouldn't repurchase, wouldn't just, I have nothing more to say. This next one set, smelled fantastic from Being by Sanctuary Spa and this was a gift from a friend and it's called Cloudberry and Lychee Blossom Body Scrub. And it was a very pretty kind of lilac-y purple color. It smelled amazing. And despite it all of it being super nice smelling, um, I have pretty much determined that body scrubs are not for me. So I finished it. But I knew that after finishing it and having finished this one, that I would not be looking for more body scrubs. If I were to receive one as a gift, I would use it but I don't, it's not an extra step that I find all that useful for me and my routine and my preferences. And I also managed to finish three Josie Marin body butters. Uh, this was the set from Christmas 2018 and it was uh, caramel apple, 
gingerbread, and sugar plum. And they are all, um, I mean, empty. I scraped every last bit of every one of the jars completely empty. Now, one thing that I will say is that this size is very convenient for travel and I have decided that I'm going to keep these jars because for moisturizer, whatever kind of moisturizer or face cream product uh, that I want to bring with me uh, traveling, I think that these are great, especially if it is like a two week trip. I'd probably take three of these little guys with me for body butter and that kind of thing. And another product that I used is the Boom Boom Cream and I had two sets of these. I had a mini down here and I'm counting it because I had ended up paying for it as part of a set. So this one and a full size Boom Boom Cream I did finish this year and the smell is divine. I'm already on to another one of these. I really, really enjoy the Boom Boom Cream. As a matter of fact, came out of the shower this morning and put some of this on. I really, really enjoy this product, but I do find that I like to have a few other body butters as well because I want to re keep re-experiencing the delight of using this scent, and I feel like if I used it every single time, it just wouldn't be special anymore. One of my quirks maybe, but that's how I, that's how I think. I like things to, to stay a treat. That's just me. One that was a treat was this uh, gift from a friend called uh, Tiber River Naturals, the raw version. And this was a body butter, totally unscented. It just has, just has not even a fresh scent. It has a very neutral scent, but you know it's good stuff. I don't know how else to explain it. And it lasted me a long time. It, it, is, it is extremely thick and luxurious feeling despite not having much of any fragrance at all. Um, really, really enjoyed this one. And it is a local company, Tiber River. So I will be, I'm sure, popping into their store on Keniston Boulevard at some point to get more and probably trying some of their scented options. So I will say thank you to Chelsea for introducing me to the Tiber River and also to Louise and Griff for introducing me to Being by Sanctuary. And as a matter of fact, I have another product from that brand to talk to you about. The other one was the body scrub. This is a body butter and it was the salted caramel and mac macadamia nut butter body butter. And it had a very weird, like a yogurty smell but not not that it was off it just had a weird yogurt smell and it felt so weird to put a yogurty smelling product on my body i mean it was extremely moisturizing it worked well but there's just something weird about the scent it, it smells like like something that i would love a yogurt i would love to eat but somehow using it that scent on my body was a little bit off-putting so i really enjoyed how moisturizing it was, it did its job, but I can't get the hmm out of my mind, so I probably would not repurchase. But even talking about salted caramel and macadamia nut, it made me hungry, I'm sure, every time I used it. So again, happy I got to try it, happy I finished it, but probably would not repurchase, at least not that particular smell. And then I finished two of these, they were such a good deal. These are body butter cream from, uh, what's it called again? From Delectable. It's called the Triple Citrus Blend. And I actually poo-pooed this product thinking it was an artificial smell. And it does, I swear to you, it smells artificial. But what is so fantastic about this company is it's all natural products. And all it is is shea butter, and orange, tangerine, and grapefruit oils. That's all that is in here. And I just thought that it smelled too strong for it to be natural, and I was completely wrong. I would highly recommend this product. As you can tell, I've gone through two tubs. It is cruelty-free and vegan, for those of you uh, for who that matters. And I... 
it's it's super inexpensive at Chopper's Drug Mart. I highly, highly recommend, and I will definitely repurchase. The value for money is huge on this delectable product. Finally, three hand creams. One more product from Being by Sanctuary, which is the Hibiscus and Coconut Water Hand Cream. And this one was in a uh, rolling panning project. I thought that I would have trouble finishing hand cream and I was wrong. Not only did I manage to get through this one during that first month of use, but I was so jazzed that I also finished this one from Cake Beauty. And this one, this heavy cream from Cake Beauty, oh my goodness. It smells divine and as is always the case with hand cream, I just need to finish every last little bit of it. I will for sure, for sure purchase more of this hand cream. It's, it's so good and it's again, it's shea butter and it's so, so thick for a hand cream. It was delightful. And the final hand cream that I finished up this year is the Body Drench Sugar and Spice. And what's funny is I bought it last Christmas and I ended up finishing it during the month of December of 2019. And as you can tell, I very much liked it. There was a lot of product in here, three fluid ounces or 88.7 mil. And and it really smells of sugar and spice. It was so much fun to use. And I think that I will probably go for another seasonal hand cream next year because it was, it really kept me in the holiday spirit all month of December or until I ran out. <laughs> and I really, really loved it. Let's move over to some skincare. Now let's start with one product, which is baby oil. And I have increased my use of baby oil for makeup that is hard to remove for the simple reason that I don't want to be tugging at my skin and it's very, very simple to dissolve some waterproof makeup with baby oil. So I've increased my use of baby oil and this is, I'm obviously out of it and I will be repurchasing this product. Though I have to say it takes forever to get through, at least for me. Then I have a my favorite brand of makeup remover. This was a very, very deluxe uh, free purchase product uh, from Shoppers Drug Mart and it is the Garnier um, All-in-One, but it's a specific one. Um, oh, uh, for sensitive, no, for all skin types, even sensitive. So that's what this one is, but it's a regular uh, all-in-one uh, makeup remover. And this one is the one that I uh, purchased myself and I usually get them uh, two at a time because they are $7.99 when they're on sale. And this is a 400 ml bottle of the waterproof Garnier, which is if I have to buy makeup remover, this is the one that I buy. And um, yeah, really happy with it. It does a great job. I have some other makeup removers to use during year 2020. And um, I will go through all of those. But once I need to buy makeup remover, this is the one that I'm going to go for. It's, it's the best value in my opinion, and it does a great job. Now I have one makeup remover that I have the most of in my empties. And it's not actually because I went out and purchased it specifically, it came as part of kits. I have a mini and I have two full size of the makeup remover. This, these are 125 mil and this one is 50 mil. And it is the Lancome Bifacile. And it is a product that I will not repurchase unless it's part of a kit, because at that point it's um, just as affordable as other brands. And I think it works fine but I don't know what the hype is about. My Garnier Waterproof works super well at a fraction of the price, and I don't, I don't see the benefit for myself anyway of paying the premium for this product. Does it work? Yep. Is it going to displace my other makeup removers that I think are fine? Nope. Next up, I have a set of facial cleansing wipes from Life Brand, and it is pretty, <laughs> 
messed up. I had 15 in this package and I did use it when I was out uh, traveling and it was very convenient to have a resealable pack uh, when on the go. And with that same purpose in mind, I did save these two sets of uh, Ulla Henriksen facial cloths. This one was the Truth on the Glow and this one was the So Nurturing Cleansing Cloth. I use them as straight cleansing cloths. I don't see how a cleansing cloth can be skincare all that well. So I did not focus on the cleansing cloth uh, claims. I just used them to remove my the makeup on my face and that was pretty much it. I just don't see how this stays on your face long enough to do anything, to be honest. Oh, and uh, there were 10, 10 in each of these two. So from these two uh, sets of 10 and the 15 count, I was fine for all of my traveling for this year. I was well equipped with a bunch of facial wipes. Now, speaking of what you use to remove your makeup using makeup remover, I finished up a um, set of 100 cotton pads from Joe Fresh. It helps if I have it on the right side. So Joe Fresh, oh, it's on this side, Joe Fresh. Um, so a hundred of these. And I also finished a huge container of 330 count of the Quo brand of, oh, what's it, what are they called? Luxury cotton facial pads. If you are in Canada and you have access to these, try them, especially if you like the Shiseido cotton squares. This is a dupe, totally, this is a dupe. This is a quilted rounded pad. These are the, the square cotton uh, pads that you would swear are the Shiseido brand. Um, I buy one of these uh, just about every year and it does last me the year pretty much. And they are a great value. I think this regular price for 330 is 11 or $12 Canadian. It's a great value. And finally, I have one of my favorites here, a Sephora, uh, Total Purify and Cleanse Gel Green Tea Extract. I really like this. I don't think Sephora sells it anymore, but I managed to get a bunch of them for $7 a piece, and I think that was fantastic value. I really like them, and I know I have one more of these that I can get through. So really excited to still have one in my backups, uh, but I really appreciated and enjoyed using this product many times. I did finish two toners from Pixie and I was very happy to use this brand. This is my go-to. As a matter of fact, I just started up a new one of these. So this lasted me for months. I like the feel of the toner and how it leaves my skin. And it is the better option of the two for me. This one is the Rose Tonic, and I have another one of these. I'll probably start using it in the summer because I find it more drying than the Glow Tonic. And um, I think it's fine, but I think it would be better for someone who does not have dry skin like I do. I have combo skin, but I just found this very drying um, around the eyes. Uh, and on the forehead. So I would keep it for times in the year that I'm more oily, but unfortunately I was using it in the fall winter time frame. But this one for sure I would highly recommend for um, combo skin, no problem. I really like it. I have used up a bottle and repurchased, so obviously I'm quite a fan of this uh, product from Pixie. I have a bunch of skincare. I have no particular order for these. I'm just going to go through them as quickly as I can. A Sephora um, coconut water moisturizing cream. I don't think coconut water creams are moisturizing enough for me. I will not repurchase. If anything, if I have any, any of these left, it's going to be for um, moisturizing my skin uh, after the shower. I have a few products from Ulla Henriksen. This is the Truth Moisturizing Cream. Uh, loved using it. Felt good, uh, would repurchase. And this is the Seabrush Brightening Gel Cream. I really enjoy that one as well and would repurchase. Just a note on this one, it can be cheaper per milliliter than the full size. So you might want to take a look at the Seabrush Cream when it comes in gift sets. Now I have some uh, products from Strivectin slash um, 
NA114 technology. I don't know what that means, but this came as a kit. And I there's the tightening neck cream, the eye serum, and this one was the tightening face serum. I think they worked well. The cream was very thick. Um, but for some reason, this package is just not inspiring or exciting to me. Uh, it's a very boring cream, which is fine for creams that do stuff. Um, but I have to say for um, the type of cream it is, I probably would go for First Aid Beauty, at least as a replacement for this one. Um, I don't know about the, the serum or the eye cream, but I, I think that um, the First Aid Beauty heavy, heavy white cream is great um, and I'd probably be more in line with that. Same thing for the next product. Now this one I was supposed to review along with the Ulla Henriksen I think and I didn't do it. I have to say that the Charlotte Tilbury Magic Cream, don't get it. Uh, as I was using it, it's a pretty container. I got it as part of a Sephora set and I Every time I was using it, I thought, this is super expensive. Why is it super expensive? And I just thought back to my First Aid Beauty cream and that that's what I would rather use over this guy. I, I didn't see or feel anything special using this cream at all. And I mean, I like the expensive stuff. I like the Algenes product as an example. So it's not necessarily just saying, oh, if something's expensive, I'll poo-poo it is if I just don't feel like it's doing anything, then I don't, I just don't see the appeal. I just don't feel like I want to open up my wallet to get more. That's all. And it's just my opinion. If you love that cream and it works for you, go for it. Use it. That's great. It just didn't do anything for me. Let's keep going with a few more Ulla Henriksen products. I have a, um, an oil control cleanser. And I had the Face the Truth Gel Cleanser and the Pore Balance Facial Sauna Scrub. Um, I don't have oily skin, so this was not a great purchase for me and I would not repurchase. I can see how it would be beneficial for somebody with uh, oily or uh, oilier side of combo skin. I preferred this one. It was a lot gentler and a better balance for my skin personally but I can see why people would like these two. This was a facial scrub and this was a facial um, cleanser. Um, yeah, I think the, the products were fine. They just weren't the best match for my skin. And the final product for uh, from Ulla Henriksen, and I have a video talking about all these products. I'll put the video right here. This one was the Sheer Transformation Perfecting Moisturizer. I have no problem with this moisturizer. It is a type of moisturizer in smaller containers that I take with me traveling. Um, I like it along with, I think it's the Transformation Gel. Um, I'll use that as a combo at night and it doesn't really have much, if any, smell. It's fine. It's um, heavy white cream as is usually my preference. And um, yeah, it worked. In my opinion, it worked fine. And that's the product I brought with me, that one and the serum for a three week trip to Guatemala. And that's all I was using and I was fine with it. Now I have three products from The Ordinary and um, I will put the video for The Ordinary right here. I did a whole uh, brand review, at least for products that I had. I finished a squalene cleanser, a vitamin C, 23% suspension plus HA spheres of 2%. And then this one is the Alpha Arbutin 2% plus HA. I was okay with all these products. I do know that I want to try a few more from the brand, for example, the Buffet. I want to try. And I thought I thought all these products were fine. Uh, the one that is a standout for me that I really, really liked was the Squalene Cleanser in a big way. This one out of the three of these, the number one I would repurchase is the Squalene Cleanser. I was a big fan of that cleanser. If you have dry uh, combo skin, I think it is a very nice cleanser. It does not dry you out like a, like a raisin <laughs> when you use it. So if you have dry spots, the squalene cleanser was very, very nice.
I would direct you to that ordinary how was it video as opposed to going through the whole review again um, in this empties video. Next I have a mask, a night mask called the Creamy Night Mask from Sephora. This was a steal. It feels amazing on the skin, super, super hydrating. I love this product. And I think I have one left. This is not the first one I've used. I think I have one left in my backups and I will be sad to see it go because I don't think that Sephora sells these anymore. And they were so good. I ended up giving some to friends. They, it was fantastic. I think that Sephora skincare is really underrated and is worth exploring. Plain and simple. I have a few serums that I finished. One of them is the Neutrogena Rapid Wrinkle Repair. That is my ride or die when it comes to retinoid products. Um, it is called the Accelerated Retinol SA and I always have a backup in my makeup stash, my skincare stash, and I highly, highly recommend this product. The cost is fantastic for a retinol product that is usually super expensive and I find it works very nicely. And I also finished a serum, which is the Lancome Genifique Advanced Serum. I uh, enjoy this product. Whichever one is a better deal, whether it's the Lancome or the uh, Estee Lauder Advanced Night Repair, I'll go between the two. Um, I really like the product. I'm not as big of a fan of this packaging compared to the Advanced Night Repair, but it works fine and I appreciate using that kind of a serum. The reason you're not seeing more than this in my empties is because I used up a whole bunch of samples of these two types of serums uh, throughout the year. And finally, quite early in the year, I ended up finishing the Rodile B Venom Eye Cream. And I will be doing a focus on Rodile in 2020. Uh, in this case, I just finished the eye cream. Rodile is extremely expensive. I did finish it completely. Um, and I did get uh, a set of regular face cream, as in night cream, and the eye cream. And I'll be using them together uh, again in 2020 and focusing specifically on this brand. What I'll say for now is I'm on the fence as far as whether Rodile should warrant the type of price that it's asking for or if it's just because it's priced a certain way because of the brand name. Um, so that's why I want to focus on Rodile and I know that I think Susan asked for a specific uh, focus, a uh, skincare brand new focus on Rodile and it's definitely on my short list to use in 2020. That's it for skincare. I think there were 21 items there and we're moving on to the next category. Let's do a quick and easy one, which is the nail category and then we'll get into hair. Nail category, I have, I think, three items. Yes, I finished a bottle of nail polish remover called uh, Joe Fresh Nail Polish Remover. Uh, it is very basic, does the job. There's nothing fancy about nail polish remover in my opinion. And yes, I would repurchase. It's four or five bucks. No issue with this particular brand or its effectiveness. It works like a charm. And I finished two Deborah Lipman uh, products. This is the uh, base coat, yeah, base coat and top coat. And not a big fan of these. The base coat was fine. The top coat, I think you can see kind of fibers on the top. It's because it was drying so fast that as I was getting the brush out of the container, it was drying on contact with ambient air and I did not manage to finish it. I have one more set of these to finish from Deborah Lipman and I will not be repurchasing. It's expensive and I don't think you get your money's worth. Okay, now on to hair products. I am very, very slow at using up hair products, so I don't have a huge amount. I do have a Fructis, uh, this smells fantastic, called uh, Big Volume. And I can use uh, volumizing sprays um, at all times because I have so little hair. <laughs> Um, I'm, I'm not huge on taking care of my hair. You can tell from the various videos. Some days I just kind of go on camera no matter what it looks like. Um, but if I'm look, looking for um, 
hold along with some volume i will go for this hairspray but i do prefer to use volumizing and texturizing sprays as opposed to specifically hairspray that volumizes if it makes sense so i'll use this usually as an end step in my hair care use i do have a couple of dry shampoos and dry shampoo slash volumizing uh, product this one is the pantene dry shampoo and this is fine for a second day hair that you just want to refresh a little bit. It is super, super cost effective. It works, it's average. It's not the best, but it's not the worst. And when you can get it for three bucks on sale, I think it is a perfectly reasonable option. And I do like this one from Mark Anthony and it is, let me just take a look at the amount of product in here. Yeah, it's, it's, um, it's also pretty cost effective. It's a couple, bucks more but it does have the volumizing effect more so than, than the pantene and it is um it says with caffeine and ginseng but uh yeah uh, volumizing and texturizing spray and i would agree that it it does what it says it does um and i would repurchase i do have a uh, texturizing spray special coming on that i have not filmed yet but this was one of the products that i was uh, comparing Next up is a product that I'm very, very sad to have seen leave Shoppers Drug Mart, and it is the Strivectin Hair Repair, and it's the Deep Repair Mask for Damaged or Thinning Hair. It has a very minty feel on the scalp, and it's supposed to help with um, renewing hair growth, um, and I have talked about this on my channel a lot. I have lost a lot of hair in the last couple of years, and this just felt right, felt good. It felt like a good conditioning mask product, and it just seemed to help with my damaged hair as well, but unfortunately, I don't have access to it at a reasonable price anymore, so I've been looking for alternatives. So I finished two full size, and then I had a travel size as well, and I ran out of it, um, I think, end of October-ish, and I was very sad to not have it anymore. I have another Strivectin product, which is the Strivectin Shampoo for Color Treated Hair. I would say nothing to write home about. I don't think I would repurchase for the price. I think it's too expensive. So not all products from a given brand we're going to have the same feel for, right? So just is what it is. Next up, I have this John Frieda Frizzies, and I'm so excited to be able to say that I finished two of the three that I purchased. I hate this product. Never want to use this product again once I finish the last one. And it gives my hair this gorgeous, dry, straw-like, ugly wave look. So if you're after this kind of a finished look, this is the product for you. But that's not what I go for. So I vowed to finish this product and to get whatever straw-like wave I could get as I finish this product. And it's going to be a good reminder never to buy it again. So let's leave that discussion on a positive note with what you should buy if you want this kind of a product. At least it works for me. And that is the Schwarzkopf Gliss Hair Repair. It is a leave-in conditioner, and this leaves my hair not just wavy, curly as heck. It is fantastic. I thought it, well, it was out of Shoppers Drug Mart, which is why I was looking for a replacement, but I now know that it is available at Superstore, and I will definitely be buying this product from Superstore ASAP once I probably, by the end of January, finish that other John Frieda and can purchase this wonderful godsend of a product at the end of the month. And finally, a product that I loved but that I will not repurchase because I'm doing different stuff with my hair. I am going blonde very progressively over the next number of months. You may have noticed that my hair is getting lighter and lighter as we go. My hairdresser is moving me along very slowly, which I'm perfectly fine with, and it looks very looks very natural. I think she does a, a fantastic job with the color. If I could only maintain it well between appointments. Um, but this is, I had to cut it because I wanted to get everything out of it. It's the Fabuloso Mahogany Color Intensifying Conditioner. This is a mini. You can also buy a very large container, but it takes me forever 
to get through one of these minis because I just put it on the, the top of my hair and it gave me a beautiful deep mahogany red, a blast of color every single time that I wash my hair. I just put this conditioner just on, on the top to address the loss of color from exposure to light. And it, it was, it's a great product. So much so that my a girlfriend of mine has um, fuchsia highlights in her hair and I bought her the fuchsia version for Christmas uh, just for her to, to try because she was complaining that the color just did not stain her hair and hopefully she's had good results with it. I definitely finished a handful of full-size setting sprays this year. So let's go from least enjoyed to most enjoyed for setting sprays. The first one is Joe Fresh. This is the hydrating and setting um, spray. I hated the smell. And it's a pretty big bottle, so it lasted a long time. 3.4 fluid ounces or 100 ml. Lasted a long time, and I just wished it was a smaller bottle. I just did not like the smell at all. One I did like the smell of and really enjoyed, and I'm working on another one right now actually, is the Master Fix by Maybelline, and it's the um, Wear Boosting Setting Spray. And it really makes me think a lot of the All Nighter Setting Spray. So I, I like it, I think it does a great job, and if you can get it on sale, it's a very, very reasonable price. Next up, I have the NYX Dewy Finish Setting Spray, and it says Long Lasting. And I've tried the mattifying and the dewy version. I think they're both fine. I just think they're overpriced. This is 60 mil and it sells for around the same size as the Maybelline, which is 100 mil. Um, so I, I think that checking price per mil makes a difference in the drugstore and it's worth it. I do like the fact that you can take this size um, for travel. You can have it in your carry-on. So that is one of the major benefits of having the smaller bottle. And two other uh, smaller bottles, they came as uh, part of sets. This one was the Hangover RX 3-in-1 from Too Faced and it is that coconut smelling uh, spray. It talks about being a replenishing primer and setting spray so you can use this as a primer to set your makeup and to refresh during the day. I did not, I think I used this as a primer a couple times. I'm not convinced of it as a primer. I prefer primers that are uh, kind of a, a paste base, that's my preference. Um, but as far as a setting spray, which was what I used, I used it uh, for most, I thought it was for, it was fine. I'm not as big of a fan of the coconut smell. It smells like a little bit like coconut that's a bit off. Um, so I don't think I would repurchase because it's a pretty expensive product. But I'm glad I had a chance to try it. That's all I have to say about it. And another product I got as part of a set was this Too Faced Peach Mist. And this one was glorious. It smelled so good. And it is a mattifying spray. So I only sprayed it in my T-zone. I tried to stay away from the periphery of my face to not dry it out. But the smell was fantastic. So I, I would use a setting spray I don't like the smell of as much, like the Joe Fresh and then finish with this one. So I was left with a nice smell as opposed to the other one. Blech. Anyway, that's it for setting sprays. And finally, we have makeup. I think I have around 40 items of makeup alone. Let's get through them as quickly as we can. I'll start with a primer. I finished this behemoth of a bottle of Joe Fresh Primer. There was a ton in this bottle. I don't know why I don't see a size on here. But it was in the um, color champagne and it uh, made me, it convinced me that an illuminating primer is a good idea or at least to put cover drops, uh, cover effects drops in my foundation or whatnot. I liked mixing this with my foundation and the foundation I was using which lasted me forever is <laughs> the Makeup Forever HD foundation. I'm in Y215 if you're curious. Love this foundation. I have a lot of other foundation to go through, but I would not, um, I would not object to buying this foundation again. I really, really enjoyed it. Kind of moving along the makeup application um, continuum, 
I consider this a not a sample because it was I think sizable enough for Becca which is 2.5 grams this was the hydrating what's it called hydra mist set and refresh powder and I'm I really am focusing on this size because I think if I re uh, purchase this this powder that I would keep to this small size because I do think that it's not a powder that would last very long and I was in a big hurry to finish it worried that it would be lost in my collection I would I would waste it I really really like it but I just don't feel comfortable buying a full size of it just because I feel like it expires quickly Next up, let's talk concealers. I managed to finish a concealer this year, and it is the uh, NYX HD in CW01. I'm about done with a CW02, but I reused the um, container for the another concealer that I was using. So you're not going to see an empty of concealer beyond this one today even though I'm, I was close to finishing a second one of these. But they do last a really, really long time, and for value, I felt like this concealer worked really, really well. I have a bunch of concealers to finish, so I would not repurchase right away, but it would be on my short list of concealers to consider if I need a new one. Let's go to brow products. I have a bunch. I have... Um, two of the pencils i have the sephora waterproof in midnight brown and it has a very interesting brush at the end just very different from um, other brow uh, products that i've used the the tip is very similar to the brow wiz and uh, then the brow wiz which i finished this one is in uh, medium brown and i finished this one I focused a whole lot on brow tint, so I didn't use that many pencils this year. Speaking of brow tint, I have this Joe Fresh uh, Universal Brow Sculpting Wax, and I dug everything out of it. There was nothing left. Put it in a container and used it um, at, with, a, with a, a brush to apply it to my eyebrows. I really like this, and I was very sad to see that it, I ran out. And I finished a couple of eyeliners. One of them was the Rimmel, what's it called? Rimmel 24 Hour Color Precise. Meh, wasn't crazy about this one. And then this other one, Sephora Classic Line. It, um, it just started not applying very well. And see, now it's working again. And I'm, I'm not being fooled again because I, took this liner out of my empties, put it back because it seemed to work again, and then it messed up my eye look, so it's it's done. It's out. And I almost missed an eyeliner. I finished this little guy. <laughs> I finished a perversion pencil. As you can see, there's nothing left whatsoever, and that was felt like a very big accomplishment. And I finished three mascaras, and I have the, um, and this does not feel right to me. I know I finished, oh, they're all in my samples. I'm only doing full size empties right now. Um, I finished a L'Oreal Lash Paradise in Waterproof. I finished the Better Than Sex Mascara from Too Faced. And also the Lise Watier Fifth Element. Now this is technically a, um, a mini, but for some reason I just, included it in in this one um, but I have a ton of other minis when I get into the uh, the samples uh, category and I'm very close to finishing up a couple of other mascaras but I'm happy that these three are showing up in this empties video and again in the samples video you should see a number of other mascaras Two more brow products. I uh, have one from Essence, which is the Lash and Brow Gel Mascara. And I stopped using it. It was pretty empty and it was kind of gross looking because the wax mixes in with the clear mascara and it just gets weird. So I put this in my empties. And then this Anastasia Clear Brow Gel, I also uh, finished this mini, which lasts a really long time. And I have um, a full one that I am working on right now.
I like this product quite a bit. Um, I also was okay with this one, although it does not hold as much as the Anastasia. But there's a big difference in price, and if you're price sensitive, I would recommend um, trying this one over this one. And now I remember why I put the Lise Wetsie in these, this full size product for mascaras. This V Elements mascara has a total of 5.6 mil, which is a lot for a mini. And I felt it just better belonged in the full size than in the minis. We are now in lip products and glosses were a, a definite focus for me. I have a number of glosses finished, a um, clear gloss from Wet n Wild, a um, relatively mini Enamored by Marc Jacobs, an Estee Lauder, which took me forever to finish, a high gloss that I absolutely loved, and also a Juicy Tubes from Nalcombe. If you watch my rolling project pan, you would be very familiar with these. And these were in my 12 by Christmas project. Love that I finished them. I also finished a whack of Buxom uh, full-on lip polishes. I have four here. Rose Julep. Um, this one is uh, Rose Julep. Cure Royale. This one is Dolly, my favorite. And this one is Sugar Sugar, I think. Or, or it's called Sugar. Uh, so finished these four. I was super, super happy to finish these because I got a set of eight, um, I think eight uh, Buxom products in my holiday set purchases. And these were getting old and I wanted to finish them so that I could enjoy the other ones without any guilt. And it was a pleasure to use them. Uh, they're super hydrating on the lips. As long as you don't mind peppermint feel, I highly recommend the Buxom full-on lip creams and full-on uh, lip polishes. And finally, um, three different products. I have the uh, NARS, uh, what's it called again? It's the Velvet Lip Glide in Bound. I absolutely loved this color and finished it up. Just, it was lovely. This thing is bone dry. <laughs> I enjoyed every minute of it. I also finished a Tarte uh, Beach Babe. And this one was uh, not that long ago, actually, but very happy that I finished it. And finally, I also finished a uh, Joe Fresh. This is my favorite color. It is, and it's completely empty. Like there's nothing left. It is in uh, pecan. And I'm working right now in the evening on a macaron from the same uh, collection. These were less than, a do uh, less than $2 a piece. I bought them on clearance. And as far as a lip treatment in the evening, or for some colors to wear throughout the day, they're fantastic. If you can get your hands on Joe Fresh Lip Balm, I highly recommend. Ha! Oh, that was it! You and I made it through 138 products for my year view of empties. I hope you found the walkthrough interesting, useful in some way. If you have any questions on any of the products I showed, uh, please let me know. I would be very happy to um, answer any questions or comments you have on this empties video. Please let me know what you thought. As I mentioned, I will have this version of empties for samples specifically. But with that, I will wrap it up. Thank you so much for watching. I appreciate it every single time. I do look forward to seeing you in the next video. But for now, take care.